Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the uh, next video in the Advanced Java Concept Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the singleton pattern. It's not unique to Java, uh, but it is used a lot in Java, and especially JVM languages like Scala. Or Scala. Um, uh, so it's a good thing to look at with Java. Of course, you can do this in most other languages. So I have this application written here. It doesn't do too much uh, right now, um, but theoretically, let's just say that it is some sort of an application. And this is the main class. And inside of this is a logger, uh, you know, in charge of logging information. So I have these pieces of these uh, instance variables, the boolean as to whether it's set up or not, the file, and then the writer for the file. I have this setup method. I have a um, boolean. I have a method to return whether it's been set up yet or not. Um, and then I have this log method that will, you know, figure out the current date, current hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, it'll print it out to the console and write it to the uh, text file. Um, and then a warning that just uh, prepends the word warning to whatever the message is. And you can imagine that, um, you know, for a good logger, you could have perhaps even more things uh, than that. Um, and it doesn't really belong in the main class. And there are two reasons as to why not. So. Let's say that this scales up to be a really big um, application. Uh, and then let's say that I have a, uh, a new class in here. Um, let's just say that this is a game. And uh, I create a player class. And this class um, represents the player of a game just to make sure we don't get any confusion. Um, so, so I have this player class, and I of course want to use the logger in here. Uh, you know, in the constructor, when it's setting up the player, I want to log, you know, beginning setup. If there are any errors, I of course want to log them. Um, and then just messages so that I can keep track of how everything is going. And the issue is that all of this logging stuff is inside of the application, the main class here. Um, so I would have to make the player uh, constructor take so let's say that it takes a name um, and then maybe other information, but it would need to have an, intra, uh, an instance rather of the application class. So then I'd have to do um, that, and I'd have to make that an instance variable um, because then I could do app dot log uh, setting up player name, uh, and then I would assign everything. Theoretically, I would do other things, and then I would log uh, finish setting up player name. And th you know, theoretically, that uh, other things would happen. Uh, but this is bad, again, for two reasons. First of all, every time I want to make a player, I have to pass in an instance of the application class, which means that if I have, you know, like a world class that contains an instance of the player, um, then the world class would need to have the application passed into it. And everywhere that I want to use this log method, I need to have an instance of the application class. And then the other problem is, well, I could make it static, but then I'd have three static instance variables and a bunch of static methods. And that doesn't really make sense. It, it could work, I guess, but it doesn't really work, especially since you have this setup method that you need to call first and everything. It just it doesn't fit the pattern very well to make everything static. And it really doesn't belong in the main class. The main class should be in charge of uh, starting the application, not logging stuff. We can fix this by putting the logger into its own class. And even better than that, we can make it a singleton class. So let's take a look. I'm going to make a new class called logger. Let me spell that correctly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to migrate everything over from the main class to the logger class. So these three instance variables here will go away. Uh, they will go to the logger class. I'm leaving the constructor there. And all of these methods, except for the main method, are all going into the logger class, because that's where they really belong. And that's a lot better. So now what I would do is um, I would probably have this as an instance variable. So I would say, uh, you know, logger equals new logger. Uh, logger.setup. I would rename that probably to be setup, and then I would say logger.log and 
logger.log. And that is great. And then over in the player class, well, I have two choices here. I could either pass this this app again. Now that I have app, I could make it getter for this logger. I could I could instantiate a new logger here, uh, but that's not always the best idea, especially since this is in charge of writing to a file. And when you have a couple of different loggers open at the same time and they're all writing to the same file, that just sounds kind of dangerous to me. I don't think it's a great idea. And then again, do you make a new instance of the logger or do you pass in the application instance? So this is a little bit better, but it's not great. We can use the uh, singleton uh, pattern to make this a lot better. What the singleton does is it ensures that there will only ever be one instance of a class and it makes that single instance of the class accessible globally and it makes it static. And we're going to look at how this is possible and why this is good. The first thing that you do when you write a singleton is it needs to have one constructor which will take no parameters and it needs to be private. So I'm going to rename this setup uh, to be the constructor because uh, remember you will only have one instance of this class so you want all of the setup to be done you know that one time but it's only ever going to happen once so that's good thing to keep in mind. So I'm going to change this to be the constructor and I made it private. So I can instantiate this anywhere else. You'll see now uh, that I get an error here and um, you know I still have that error there. But now that this is private it means that I can only create instances of the logger class inside of the logger class. So that'll make sure that no other classes can make new instances. The next step is to actually create one instance. So we're going to make a private static logger. I usually name them instance. You could name it logger or whatever you want. And I always write it like this, equals new logger. And there are two different ways to do this, and we'll see in a second. Uh, but you'll notice this is kind of like a private static instance variable. This is the single instance of the logger class. No other classes can instantiate the logger class, and I'm not doing it anywhere else inside of the logger class itself. So that's the only time that you'll ever see it. Then um, you would want to create a get instance method. Uh, I suppose you could make instance public, uh, but Java usually likes getters, so we do it like this. And now we have access to this instance wherever we are. So now we don't need logger to be an instance variable. We don't need to instantiate it. What we can do is we can write logger.getinstance.log. And you'll notice how clean this is because now I just say logger.getinstance and it gives me access to this uh, logger right here. And that's not going to give me an issue with multiple loggers running the same file uh, because there's only one of them. So when I call this log method, which is a blocking method, it won't stop until it writes the message or it fails, then I can ensure that I don't have multiple sources writing to one file at the same time. And of course, if you're logging a lot of information, like I have two lines here, if I don't want to write logger.getInstance, a lot of times I can write something like logger l equals logger.getInstance. And then I can just write l.log. And that's really easy. It just it's a little bit more concise instead of writing logger .get instance every single time. And then over in player, I don't need to pass application anymore. I don't have to worry about you know application having these variables, these methods, or application having logger as an instance field or anything like that. I can now do the exact same thing. Logger .get instance log, and I can remove that again. Um, and you'll notice here um, that this is great because now I can access this anywhere I want within my project. Any new file I create can immediately do logger.getInstance and it can immediately access everything that's public inside of the logger class. That's how the logger, or sorry, that's how the singleton pattern works. It ensures that there's one instance of a class and that that class and that the, there is one instance provided by the class right there. Uh, the reason why this is great, or rather some applications of this could be, again, like let's say you're working on a game. Um, you can store information about a player 
you can store configuration files. Um, like if you want to configure screen size or graphics, you know, how good the graphics are, or key bindings or anything, you can have a configuration manager sort of as a singleton so that you can access this information from anywhere. And then there's only one instance. So if you modify the information, you don't have to worry about different instances having different information and all of that confusion. Before this video is over, there's one quick thing uh, that I just want to mention. You'll notice here that our logger instance is instantiated uh, in the same line that it's created. This is called eager initialization. We are, uh, you know, creating an instance of logger as soon as we're declaring it. And theoretically, although it doesn't apply in this sense, there may be some cases where you don't need that to happen immediately or that it should happen later um, just to make your program start up quicker. Um, and what we can do is we can defer to lazy initialization. This may also look better to some people uh, who don't like instantiating instance variables. You know, it's bad practice to immediately instantiate an instance variable. Um, so, you know, we'll make the code look a little bit nicer. And we say if instance is equal to null, um, then we say instance equals new logger. And you'll see that what happens is the first time we call get instance, which would be right here in the application class, um, we will find that instance is equal to null. We haven't instantiated it yet. So at that point, we instantiate it, and then we move on to returning it. And from then on, this will always be false. Oh, instance will always have a value, uh, so we'll never need to instantiate it again. And again, this is private, so it couldn't be changed by an outside class, at least not without reflection. Um, so this will always be false, and we will never see that logger is instantiated a second time. It'll always just return the same instance. Um, so that's eager versus lazy initialization, and that is the singleton design pattern. Don't overuse it in all of your classes, but in certain specific cases, it can be really useful and a lot neater than, you know, keeping everything in one class and passing around instances. And then maybe instantiating one class multiple times and having inconsistent variables. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. And I'll see you guys soon with some more programming. Bye for now.